Welcome. Good afternoon. It's afternoon for me, right? Uh, good afternoon. Good, I guess, good evening for some people. I'd say so, yes, good evening to some of you people. And uh, we are the morning for others, but welcome, come on in, make yourselves comfortable. I wanna thank you all for joining me, joining me live here. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Hope you're enjoying uh, the um, Bitcoin stability and the USD denominator price that we're experiencing here with Bitcoin. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in, guys. Come on in, guys. All right. Grab the beverage of your choice. We're going to talk about some interesting things today. Uh, a few things, seven things, in fact. So um, we are going to um, talk about some things that I think will touch the lives and interests of almost everyone who uh, is either watching this live or watching it in recorded fashion. All right, so grab the beverage of your choice, guys. Um, maybe even grab something to write with. I always have something to write with here, guys. Always. I'm a very, I'm still old schooled here. I should teach my traders to do this as well. I've got journals. I, I have journals that I keep notes in um, regarding everything. And uh, I collect things that hit me a certain way. I collect things that give me aha moments. I collect things. And I've done this my virtual most of my life, right? I could like collect things that that's hit me a certain way that's giving me these aha moments, um, epiphanies, uh, things that have just struck home just the right way. And uh, I review them. I have uh, journals that date back all the way to, oh, shoot, 1983, 1982, uh, all the way back. And I keep them. I never throw them away. And... Uh, all you need is this. Now, I know today, in today's digital world, this can be largely done, right? This can be largely done with your cell phone. I have notes here. Uh, and I do use them both, but I'm old school. So something about holding the actual journal and putting pen to paper, that, I don't know, that tactile part of the process means something to me. And that's probably uh, more indicative of um, the error that I was brought up into. Um, but yeah, so anyway, no matter what, which, which way you do it, I think uh, taking some notes uh, can be beneficial. But listen, welcome once again. Uh, very quickly, uh, most of you who are familiar with my talks, you understand that I sort of go into this these rant style, this rant style of delivering the limited amounts of information and knowledge that I have um, that I'm open to sharing. Uh, so, but at the same time, I do try to take questions. So your questions are always welcome. Ask them throughout the throughout my rant and my talk. Um, ask them after, if we have some time, I'll take them after. I also try to peruse through the comments after the, um, that our talk is, is complete because not everyone has the privilege um, of watching the event live. So some of the questions come in after. And sometimes I feel that the presentation has gone too long to actually go into a Q&A segment. So I will try to answer some of the questions that even you asked, asked during the live session uh, afterwards, okay? Uh, keep in mind that every single one of my talks, whether it's in video form or whether it's uh, purely audio in nature, those talks do wind up on my Bitcoin podcast. And I want you to follow. I want you to follow that. Um, I want you to follow that. If you find anything I have to say of interest, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not everyone's cup of tea, nor do I want to be everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> so I do understand that. But if you find that... Um, Anything I have to say of value, you'll probably find a, a lot more value in some of the prior talks that I've had over the past several, um, over the past several months here. I want to I want to do this. I want to actually show you this, if I if I may. So I have. Give me a second here. I have. 
Let's do it like this. Give me just a moment here. I'll let you about this. I have a, um, let's do it like this. I have pinned at the top of my profile. I pinned the big Bitcoin Unleashed podcast link that will send you to um, all of the popular um, directly to Bitcoin Unleashed, the podcast that's on most of your popular podcasting platforms. And so you can pick the poison of your choice. And uh, I just want to show you that really quickly before we get started. I'll do that right now. Boom. And this is what you will. This is what you will see if you click that link at the top of my profile. Uh, Bitcoin Unleashed, it'll take you to the YouTube version, the Spotify, Fountain, the Apple Podcast, or what have you, Google, what have you. OK, so um, follow that. Take in some of the past ones and uh, ask away, ask your questions away. They're perfectly fine. Uh, uh, I'll, I, I even like to receive questions on some of the past talks as well. OK, all right, guys. So why don't we do this? Let's without any further ado, got my my water here. Let's delve into some of the things I want to talk to you about. Um, today, by the way, uh, I did manage to post something a little personal about me, one of my vices um, in terms of uh, smoking cigars. I have been smoking cigars for a very long time, guys, and I do try to keep it in moderation. So don't get crazy. But um, uh, there they are. Let me show you. There they are. Boom. There those bad boys are. I don't know if you can see that humidor, their drawers are them right there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna talk today. What did I what did I what did I label this? Seven <laughs> seven guaranteed ways to lose your Bitcoin. Seven guaranteed ways to lose your Bitcoin. And um, this is my opinion. Uh, it's based on um, being a studier of, of Bitcoin from, I would say, 2018 onward, which is still a baby, and also being a, a real true hodler of Bitcoin from 2020. Uh, now, I have the, the great privilege of guys being in touch with thousands upon thousands of people all over the world. I have over 16,000 traders that span 95 different countries, some of whom I actually personally fund for their activity in financial markets, trading, playing financial markets. And um, because of this large contact, this large base of people um, that I am constantly in, in touch with in my inner circle, uh, I do have the privilege of seeing witnessing in many ways and being exposed to just a large collection of experiences. And so um, I can speak not just from an opinionated point of view, but from just, as I said, being exposed to countless experiences, uh, both, both great and not so great. And uh, me sharing some of these things, I think has a, have a certain value, all right? Um, we don't need to see you on video, so turn 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 your screen around. That's fine. Um, I will do continue to do a mix of audio versions, um, as I did last night, and video versions. What I found is that the video versions um, do um, outperform in terms of viewership by a factor of five. The the audio only versions. All right. If you don't want to see my face, just simply turn your screen around or turn it off and just listen to my voice. All right. Sound good? Awesome. Good. All right. Seven things that seven things that I feel are guaranteed ways to, to lose your Bitcoin. Let's talk about number one. Okay. I found a major error made by many who actually treat Bitcoin more as a casino versus the savings technology it is. I think it's important to understand that Bitcoin is the world's greatest savings technology 
that's ever been that, that humans have ever been exposed to. We've had a variety of things over the course of human evolution to use as a savings mechanism, but none of them um, come close to the power of Bitcoin being used as a savings technology. But the mistake that I've seen many use it as, they use it as a casino. And what I mean by that is that they use it as this vehicle that they believe that if they just buy one time, that one buy is sort of like one bet at the roulette wheel. And they're expecting and looking for that one buy, that one act, which is not an act of savings, it's an act of betting. They want that one purchase to basically solve their life. They want that one purchase, that one act, which is not a savings act, it's a gambling act. They want that one purchase to create magic for them. And what many of these people do is they sort of get drawn in by Bitcoin's number go up to part of its technology. They miss the idea that Bitcoin is also a freedom go up technology in addition to a number go up technology. So the freedom part of Bitcoin's benefit, they are not really focused on. They're only focused on the number go up. Now, the people who, and we're all drawn initially by that at least, and the people who tend to become most interested in mustering up the nerve to make that bet, remember that bet is not a savings act, it's a bet, it's a casino act, they typically do that at the highs. Now, why do they typically do that at the highs? Why are these one-time buyers, these one-time bettors, one-time players at or near the high, um, it's because that's when the greatest degree of attention, focus, media, FOMO, um, buzz throughout the world is going on at Bitcoin. There's very little of that typically happening in the throes of Bitcoin's bear market declines, and certainly not so much at the, at the bottom at the bottom of a Bitcoin bear market. And if we are at or close to the bottom of a Bitcoin bear market, all of the news and all of the buzz that you hear is completely dark and disastrous in nature. So there's no incentive for these one-time bettors to do their bet or act at or near the low. They're typically brought in at or near the high. When everything is positive, um, it is in your face that Bitcoin is eating the world. It is not dead. It's destroying every other comparative play option um, on planet Earth. And they get drawn in with this single bet at or near the high. Now, what some of these people do is there are two groups. There are two groups that these one-time bettors fall into. They fall into group number one, where as Bitcoin begins to decline and they literally see the value of their initial one-time bet start to dramatically decrease, they sell at a loss. Now that's the majority of this, these one-time buyers. They get rid of their Bitcoin. It is at a fraction of the value that they actually put into it. And most of them, most of them do not come back. A portion of them come back, but that's a very small portion. Most of them don't come back. They feel burnt. They feel taken advantage of. They, many of, many of them actually even go on the um, complete negative side for Bitcoin and become Bitcoin negators. All right. And the problem is that they approached it like a casino. They approached it like they were going to Vegas. They took one amount of money, put it on one specific USD denominated price and expected that that ticket, that lottery ticket, that casino bet, that roulette, that roll of the dice. They expected that to take care of them. This is a disrespect to the greatest savings technology human beings have ever been exposed to the hardest money on planet earth as of april 20th of this year the one of this one of if not the scarcest assets assets on planet earth it is disrespectful to approach something this special in a gambling type way and 
That is a guaranteed way to lose your Bitcoin. So what does this first guaranteed way really mean? They're not DCA. Dollar cost averaging. Bitcoin is a savings technology that is best acquired through regular and relatively frequent little purchases. And what this DCA approach, weekly or daily, I prefer weekly, bi-weekly, even monthly, and some people can't do it more frequently than quarterly, whatever, the period of time is less important than consistency of application itself. And so whether you decide that you can only do it once every three months or once every month or once every two weeks or once every every week or once every day is really not the important part. The important part is the consistency of doing it at that frequency. Um, I feel indefinitely. And so they're failing to take advantage of this special asset technology, money, store of value, savings technology through a method that does one thing and one thing very well. It removes the vast majority of Bitcoin's um, volatility out of the asset. If there's one thing that causes people to have pause when it comes to Bitcoin, it is its seeming volatility, okay? That's a different topic. I believe that Bitcoin is actually not the volatile thing. It's the US dollar's opinion of Bitcoin that's volatile. But that's a talk for another day and another session, right? But what DCA will do is it will even out the volatility and actually bring the volatility down very close very close to zero. And so by, by taking one amount at one price and betting on it like it's a freaking ro roulette roll of the dice or, or what have you, um, they're eliminating the number one benefit that Bitcoin has to offer. It is mathematically designed to increase one's value increase one's wealth, improve upon who they are and what they have every four years. But you're not going to get that benefit with one uh, roll of the dice, one amount, one price. You can't do it that way. All right. And so that's a guaranteed way to lose your Bitcoin. I was... I don't think I went to, to part two of that. So the people who apply this one time, one price roulette wheel type entry into Bitcoin, they lose their Bitcoin in one of two ways. The one way, which is what I explained is they will, the majority sell at a loss. The second group will hold on for dear life through stubbornness and through ego in most cases through this desire i'm just i'm not going to lose i'm going to just hold on and see if this thing comes back and when if it when bitcoin does eventually come back they sell out when they're at or near break even which is the worst freaking time to lose your bitcoin the worst time to lose your bitcoin is when it comes back for you. That's the worst time because every single time in Bitcoin's life, when it's come back for you, it has superseded that exponentially. And so by letting go of your Bitcoin, just because from a USD denominated um, basis, you are break even is the absolutely statistically stupid thing to do. There is not one single instance in the last 15 years, Bitcoin's entire life, 
where when it when it has come back for you, it has not exponentially superseded your break even price. Now, to touch upon this DCA approach once again, all right, is every single time you are purchasing Bitcoin lower than your last purchase, you are lowering your entry price. So if one were to buy $100 worth of Bitcoin at $60 and then buy another $100 at $30, they're literally brought their initial entry price from $60 and they brought it down by 50% between 30 and 60. And we, 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 we know what that is, that they brought their entry price down to $45. Through DCA, you alter your entry price. You change your average price, which can be construed as your actual entry price. And each time you do this, you're lowering your entry price. You're lowering your average, average cost into Bitcoin, making Bitcoin making setting up bitcoin to not have to work as hard to throw you into profitable territory now what is unique about this is that there are many assets that that serve as a store of value like real estate that do not offer the ability to dollar cost average into them how do you dollar cost average into a farm or um a five million dollar mansion you just can't, simply can't or the average price of a, uh, the average piece of the average home in the United States, which is close to $400,000 today. You can't dollar cost average into a piece of property, but Bitcoin is a property that you can actually dollar cost average in. It's a huge benefit that a lot of people still are not utilizing. And it's the number one reason, that's why I made it number one, why people lose their Bitcoin. They're playing this savings technology as a casino and it doesn't work. It's a guaranteed way of losing your Bitcoin. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, Herbert. Thanks, Oliver, for BTC education. Awesome. All right. Um, yes, um, Michael is saying here that they also have a uh, high time preference, which is another way of saying they're very short term oriented. And yes, that's just another way of saying they're not approaching Bitcoin as for, they're not approaching it for what it is. It is a savings technology. When you save, it's a constant nonstop thing. It's not a one-time thing, you know? And so, yeah, that's just another way of saying that they have a high time, time, time preference. They're looking for an immediate gain from one roll of the dice. It's a guaranteed way of losing your Bitcoin. All right. Now, second way I will say is um, <laughs> the second way <laughs> is they don't use the bear markets, which I sort of went into already. They don't use Bitcoin's declines as an opportunity to get more of freedom, more of the rarest asset on earth, more of the hardest money ever known to man. They use it more as a reason to exit. So one of the things that I have been exposed to, fortunately, in, in my work is that I've, I've been exposed to countless scenarios that have proven to me over and over again that massive wealth is always made on the downside. Billions are always made in the bear market, whereas that the general public tends to feel outside of my industry that the best that your money and your wealth and your win is scored on the upside. Very little of your wealth, very little of your gain is made on the upside. M massive wealth in financial markets, Bitcoin included, is made in the bear markets on the way down. It's what you've done on the way down that dictates what the up move will do. 
And the idea that I will come into it once it starts going up is a false idea. That's the fallacy that invades the minds of most individuals who don't have financial sophistication as it relates to markets. On the way up, markets are running away from you. On the way down, they're coming to you. What you do when the market is coming to you dictates how much it delivers for you and by you on the way up because you will never be able to get size on the way up. Size is only available on the way down. Opportunity is at its greatest during a Bitcoin bear market. Most people have this idea that I'm going to sidestep the bear market and wait for the bull market. Whenever I hear someone do that, say that and, and insinuate that that's what they're going to do, I know I'm dealing with a financial novice, a nitwit for the most part, who simply doesn't understand that you make your money on the way down, not on the way up. Your asset is running away from you on the way up instead of pulling you on the way up. The person who uses the Bitcoin downward moves will be pulled to generational wealth on the way up instead of the novices chasing Bitcoin on the way up. You never get size and you're always trigger shy on the way up because you're always second guessing. Am I buying too high? Should I wait for it to come back? Do you know how many people are left in the dust waiting for Bitcoin to come back to one dollar? They never got back in. Ten dollars never got back in. One hundred dollars never got back in. One thousand dollars never got back in. Ten thousand dollars. You guys know people today still waiting for Bitcoin to drop to ten thousand dollars and never got in because that's what they were waiting for. It doesn't work that way, people. It has not even before Bitcoin did, did it work this way. All right. And so that weekly DCA eliminates the need for all of that and removes all of those silly errors made by novices and the unsophisticated. It also sets you up for moving your average price down and it sets you up for generational wealth. When Bitcoin turns, it pulls you and no chasing has to be done. You don't want to chase Bitcoin on the way up. You want to accumulate it on the way down so that it pulls you, your family, to freedom on the way up. There should be no sidestepping of Bitcoin's bear market declines. There should be a stepping up during Bitcoin's declines because we have a history. We have 15 full years. I don't know how many years you more you need. I don't know if you need another 15 years. You need 30 years in total. You need 50 years in total. It's ridiculous now if you still need to see more, more years. We've got 15 years of proof that every single dip buyer that has every single person, every single human being on planet Earth that has ever bought a Bitcoin dip is profitable today, is okay today. Bitcoin saved them every single one. There's not one human being. Think about this. There's not one human being out of 8 billion people. I know that's not many people, that, that many people don't play Bitcoin, but I'm just saying every human being, think about this. Every human being who's ever banked on Bitcoin by buying a dip today is taken care of, safe, protected, better off than they were, richer, wealthier with the soundest money humans have ever had, the scarcest asset on earth. That's incredible. Buying Bitcoin's downward moves has never failed. And I am willing to go out on a limb and say, if you give Bitcoin four to five years of, of, of faith and conviction, it will never fail you for the rest of your life for the lives of your children because it is mathematically designed to become scarcer and its issuance rate gets cut in half every four years, which is a mathematical certainty that guarantees that all the existing Bitcoin in existence at the time of the halvings instantly become more valuable 
when you cut the flow of new supply in half, it means that the asset has become harder. The harder an asset becomes, the more valuable the asset is. And every four years, it is mathematically designed to become harder, therefore more va valuable, therefore more scarce. And this is a mathematical guarantee that you can only win every four years of your life, all the way to 2140, long after you'll, you'll be on this planet. And so the second way you are going to lose all of your Bitcoin on a statistically speaking, is not utilizing the bear markets, trying to sidestep them, trying to escape them, trying to sell out of Bitcoin on the sidelines to go back in. That has never worked. You, Some people have gotten lucky with it, but it doesn't work consistently. Not with Bitcoin, it doesn't. No sidestepping the bear, stepping up in the bear is how generational wealth is made with this asset okay what's another way selling your bitcoin for a gain now i know this is going to rattle the cages of a lot of people out there who have plans solid plans today right now they have solid plans i know you're out there i know you're out there to sell their Bitcoin for this huge profit and come back in at a later time. This selling Bitcoin for profit is a problem because statistically what will happen are these things. Number one, you will almost never sell the high. There are people who've gotten lucky with this, but you will almost never sell the high. What you think is a high price will statistically prove to you that you should have never sold there. This has been the experience. Guys, I've read almost every single thing a person has ever written about Bitcoin on a Bitcoin forum all the way back to 2010. And in some cases, 2009, I've tried to read every word, every sentence, every post, every tweet. Do you understand? I wanted to know the history. I wanted to get into the mindset of those who had embraced this asset earlier, came in contact with this special savings technology early. I wanted to understand what the narratives were at those times. I wanted to understand what people were thinking what their activity was, how they dealt with it. And I will tell you that I've never found someone who was proud of selling, ever. And guys, I've read almost every single punctuation mark. Do you understand? I have yet to find someone who is happy that they sold Bitcoin for a profit today. No one in 2010, no one in 2011, no one in 2012, no one in 2013, no one, no one is happy they sold Bitcoin. No one. And so from a statistical point of view, what has happened in all of my readings and in the experiences that I've come in contact with over and over and over again is that where people thought they should sell for profit turned out not to be a great place to sell. And Bitcoin doubles or triples or quadruples from their sell point. Their idea was to sell for profit, take advantage of some fiat gains and get back in on the decline. They're waiting for a decline from where they sold, but Bitcoin doubles, triples, so forth and so on. Now, the decline that they are waiting for happens miles above where they sold. And that decline doesn't give them the opportunity to get below where they sold. So they're going to have, the, in many cases, the need to reach higher and to pay 
a much bigger price than what you paid for Bitcoin in the past is required. And let me tell you this, a small number of percentage, a, only a small percentage of people actually do that. I know people who went into Bitcoin with me, 3,800, 3,900, four thousand dollars of bitcoin and went in with size we went in with size in that area in 2020 and i i know traders that sold out for a triple 12,000 13,000 14,000 even i like a dummy did some of that but sold out at these prices waiting for bitcoin to pull back by about 45 to 50 percent which Bitcoin we know can do. And so the run up to the $14,000 area was so hard and fast. The idea was that it got a little ahead of itself and it would pull back to about seven, 8,000, 8,000 and a half or so. And so the people who saw that I know in my life who sold out around that $14,000 area were waiting for that. But Bitcoin shot to $20,000 to reapproach its former high. Now, they're faced with this issue. They sold out at 14. It's now close to $20,000. What do they do? Do they bite the bullet? And now remember, their entry price is around $4,000. So think of how much more expensive they're thinking 4,000, I've got to reach up now and buy a fraction of what I had at 20,000. Now I'm going to wait for it to pull back. Maybe I can get it back to 14,000 where I let it go. Waiting for it to come back, Bitcoin pulled back to about 16,000 and change and rocketed straight to $28,000. Now they're faced, they're, they were waiting at 7,000. Then they raised their waiting spot to 14,000, which never got there. Now it's at 28. Now what do they do? These people today do not have Bitcoin. It's at 70,000. Now, did it come close during Bitcoin's bear market? Yes, but it fell so hard that now they're wondering whether or not it's worthy enough to go in, even though it got down to 16,000, 15,500, which is where they sold it from. It's years later. They're hearing nothing but negativity. And they still don't have Bitcoin. And now it's at 70,000. This is a guaranteed way of never, of losing all of your Bitcoin or losing a good portion of your Bitcoin especially if you don't take all of it off the table and being left behind forever. I pound the table with my people. No profit taking, no selling Bitcoin for a gain. This is a savings technology. You don't sell your savings for a gain. You save. You sell other things for a gain for more Bitcoin, but you don't sell Bitcoin for more weakness. Bitcoin is the escape from weakness. Bitcoin is the escape from the melting ice cube. Bitcoin is an escape from a failing system. You don't sell the escape to go back to the failing system. Now, some people say, well, Oliver, then how, how am I going to benefit from it? And I understand this. I believe that in within the next three years, you'll be able to utilize your Bitcoin for anything you want on planet Earth. It's coming. It's being built out now. Even now, you can borrow against your Bitcoin to this very day. But those opportunities, those services built on this new base layer of money, they're coming and they're going to proliferate. And no one is going to tell me on this earth that you holding the hardest money humans have ever had, the best performing asset the world has ever seen by any conceivable and every conceivable metric, the hardest asset on planet earth, superseding gold and real estate, 
disappearing, becoming more scarce, guaranteed to become more valuable every four years. No one's going to tell me that there will not be benefits that accrue to the person that owns the scarcest thing on planet Earth. In what world will that be a reality? In what world will you as the owner of the scarcest thing on earth not get some benefits accrued to you? How, how, in what world? That, 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 that doesn't even make sense. And so now we use Bitcoin as a savings technology that we don't exit out of. And if we can give ourselves three, four years, five years tops, red carpets all over this world will be rolled out to those who own a piece of the monetary base layer of the entire globe, because that's where we're going. We were never given the opportunity to own the base layer of anything as human beings, ever. We were not given the opportunity to grab chunks of Manhattan or chunks of the new land in America. But today we have the opportunity and it's in our faces. We didn't have the opportunity to own a piece of the internet and the internet birthed the, the world's first trillion dollar assets. It brought an Amazon into existence. It brought a Google into existence. It brought Nvidia into existence and on and on and on and on. The internet changed the lives of virtually every single human being on earth and in unimaginable ways. Imagine if the internet birthed all of this value, what if you could own a piece of the very thing that all of these companies and all of these things built their value on top of? Well, now we have that opportunity. Bitcoin is not the internet of information and knowledge the way the first internet was. It is something bigger and grander than that. It is the internet of money, which makes the freaking world go around. And we can own a piece of it. We can stake our claim in something that the world is going to build their future value on top of. It is going to birth the world's next 10, 20, 50 trillion dollar operations, com companies, and countries, and we can own a piece of it, that is not something that you sell, guys. That is not something you sell. And so everyone's not going to be able to participate at the base layer. Bitcoin will forever be available and accessible to every human being on earth, but every human being is not going to get the opportunity to own chunks of the base layer. The same way every person who came to New York City did not have the opportunity to own blocks of Manhattan. But we can own blocks of Bitcoin today. Something that is clearly setting itself up as the financial base, the future financial base layer of the world. All right. Spot on analysis. I appreciate that sophisticated one. All right. So I try my very best to get people to understand that Bitcoin should be looked at as your unit of account now. You've had, we've had a faulty unit of account. Our unit of accounts have been the US dollar, the Argentinian peso, the Japanese yen, the euro, um, the Turkish lira, you know, the, the Chinese renminbi. All of these things are failing. Just look, look at their purchasing power collapsing like a freaking, like the freaking shit coins that they are. They're failing. You can't tell me, people, that this, I'll show you something. Give me a second here. I'll show you something here. You can't tell me that this is the picture. Oh my God. Ah. Give me a second here. You cannot tell me that this 
is the picture of success. Take a look at this. Smoke on this. Check this out. How can you tell me that this is the picture of success? I'll wait. I will wait. Let's go here. How? Did I do this right? Ah. Uh, give me a second here. I gotta I gotta blow it up here. A second here, here it is. How can you tell me? Give me a second. It's a little cumbersome to do this here on the fly, but how? This is the picture of success? No, people. This is the picture of a freaking failing system that you are being sold on is not failing. You are being taught to save in this. You are being taught to use this as your unit of account. And it's wrong. Do you understand? Let me show you what your unit of account should be. You should be measuring everything in your life against this. This is the picture. You should be utilizing instead. Let me show you. That's the standard. That is what you should be saving in. That is what you should be earning the weak and putting it into the strong. You should be earning the first picture. You're forced to earn the first picture by no choice of your own. And you should be putting it here. Do you understand? But you are taught to put everything into the wrong picture. Do you understand? You're taught to convert everything to the failing picture. You're taught to sell, get out of your trade to put it into the failing picture. Sell your property to put it into the failing picture. You're taught to, oh, Bitcoin is giving you a gain. Sell your Bitcoin to go back to the failing picture instead of the reverse. Sell your trade in NVIDIA to to put into the, the strong. Save there, save where, save into this picture. Trade your bullshit and when you win, you put it there. Sell your property and when you get the gains, you put it there. Trade your time with your employer and when you get it, you put it there. You don't put it into the wrong picture. Not today. Not if you have half of a brain today. All right? The cat is out of the bag. I'm sorry. This is not the picture that you put your life in. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't put your life in this picture. This is not the savings technology that you're supposed to be using today. Bitcoin has come to liberate us from this picture. Bitcoin has come to, to free us from being trapped right there. We're under, by no choice of our own, everything I put in here starts going down in value every single second I hold it there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some Somebody say, yes, Oliver, we get it. Just somebody. I just want to see somebody type that. Oliver, we get it. Anybody. Please. Guys, excuse the glasses. It's, I have lights here and I get freaking migraines. And I stare with the lights in my eyes too long. So,
That's right. A big fat lie. We get it. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate you indulging me like that. All right. And so I try to encourage people. Why would you sell? Why would you sell? This. Let me show you something here, guys. I'm going to show you something else here. Why would you sell? I'm going to show you this. And I do this regularly because I think it's necessary to keep this in your freaking faces. Do you understand? Why? Tell me this. Why would you sell this to go into, let me show you, the dollar Why would you sell that to go into that? Did you see that? Did you see that switch? When you sell Bitcoin, you're selling it to go, you're selling the success to go into the failing. That's the failing picture. That is the US dollar in Bitcoin terms. It moved to a new low against Bitcoin. What this picture is telling you is that if you're not holding Bitcoin and you're holding the US dollar instead of Bitcoin, this is what you're experiencing. Now, look at your life. This is your life. Do you understand? This is what your life is experiencing. But the trick is that you don't really feel it day to day. And therein lies the trap. Therein lies the trip, the trick. Do you realize, people, that we are spinning? Well, how fast are we spinning? Give me a second. Okay. Do you realize that we are spinning at about 1,000 miles an hour? Think about this, 1,000 miles per hour, the earth is spinning. Do you feel it? Just because you don't feel it doesn't mean it's not happening. Do you understand me? Just because you don't feel your life declining that way, your value, this is your future. It's the future of you, your family, your kids and their kids. And it will never stop. Fiat currencies have no bottom. Do you understand? And it's the reason why Bitcoin has no top. And so whenever you take, sell Bitcoin for a profit, what you are saying is that it is sound to go back to this. It's wrong. You sell everything to go to this. There it is. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. Let me get it for you. You sell everything to go back here. Get it straight. You sell into this. You take profits into this. You save in this. You DCA into this. And you grab as many chunks of what will become the base layer of value for planet Earth, you grab as many chunks as you possibly can. There are going to be people, billions of people born after today, right? Billions. What is the estimated population of, of Earth? Let me show you this. What's the estimated population of Earth in 2000, I don't know, 2050? All right, that's not that far from here. It's 25 years from now almost, right? For the most part. So check this out. 
Take a look at this. Estimated population of planet Earth, right, is um, that's right. It says, see it that way. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Estimated estimated population is what in 2050? 10 billion. Guys, think about this. We're just a little shy of 8 billion people on Earth today, estimate, estimated. The estimate is for just a little shy of 10 billion. That's 2 billion more people will never have your opportunity today. 2 billion people will never be able to buy Bitcoin in chunky fashion. 2 billion people will probably never be able to buy Bitcoin. No one in the future is going to accept the weak for the strong. Not as people begin to understand more and more of what I'm explaining to you people. It's not going to happen. Do you understand that the era in which we are able to give someone the weak picture for the strongest picture the world has ever seen? Do you realize that the window of opportunity to trick people that way is not going to stay, that window of opportunity is small and it's not going to stay open for long. At a certain point, the world's going to wake up and say, I'm not taking your bullshit government printed piece of paper for the scarcest, rarest asset on earth that has the best performance of anything human beings have ever come in contact with. I'm not taking your, um, your Argentinian peso for that. I'm not taking your Japanese yen. I'm not taking your, your freaking euro. I'm not taking your Federal Reserve printed US dollar for this. I'm not doing it. You better come to me with something else because I'm not taking it for a freaking piece of paper anymore. These 2 billion people will never be able to buy Bitcoin ever. And all of the billions of people after that they're born will never be able to buy. You are special. We are special today because of the time that we are living on planet Earth right now. We're able to give idiots pieces of paper for the rarest thing on earth, the hardest money the world has ever seen, the best performing asset in the history of the globe and the hardest asset in the history of mankind. And people are still willing to take pieces of paper for it, but not for long. Bitcoin's not gonna be bought in the future. It is going to be worked for in the future. In order for you in the future to get more Bitcoin, you are going to have to find a Bitcoiner. and You are going to have to work for that Bitcoiner. You and you are going to have to deliver something so sublime. You are going to have to deliver something to that Bitcoiner that is so freaking special to allow the, to entice that Bitcoiner to give up the hardest money on earth, the scarcest asset on earth, the hardest asset the world has ever seen, and the best performing asset in the history of planet earth. And to give that item up in all of the future gains of that item forever. You better come to that Bitcoiner correctly. You better come to him with something so freaking magical. You better make him levitate. If that Bitcoiner wants to levitate, you better make him levitate. It's going to be the only way you're going to get your hands on Bitcoin is to find a Bitcoiner and you better be very special to it. And that is our plight in the future because no one's gonna take government money for it in the future, no one. And so when I'm constantly pounding the table, people, you do not have a lot of time. This is what I'm talking about. They used to have free land runs in the United States, free. Do you understand this? They used to have free land runs. They used to put bulletin, they used to put bulletins, nail them to corrals uh, and 
and nail them in bars and saloons. Tomorrow at 12 p.m., we've got a we've got another land run out here in Nebraska. It's a mile long run. Come on out with your families. A dude would have a gun. There would be chalk lines that create like tracks. All right, this family's in between that track. This family's in between that track. This family's between that track, like a freaking Olympic race, right? Everyone would line up at the starting line. The rules were, when I shoot this gun, the families run. You stay inside the track lines. And when I shoot the gun again, you stop. You take this freaking wooden stake when I, when, I, when I shoot the gun again, and you stake your claim. And from the starting line to where you staked your claim, that's where that term comes in. That's where that term was created. Stake your claim was from the free land runs in the United States, free. And these families stake their claim in all of the land between the chalk lines from the starting point, from the point where they staked, fat people got less, leaner people got more. It's just the way it is. But the land was free. In 2010, People were giving away free Bitcoin. There was something called the Bitcoin faucet by Gavin Andreessen. He wanted to promote Bitcoin and create a Bitcoin faucet. All you had to do was to show up to this website. You had to insert an email address and a receive address. You had to solve a capture just to make sure that you weren't a bot. Like, you know, the captures that say, is this a capital C, a little C, a star, the number one, like that. You had to solve a capture to make sure that you weren't a bot to cheat the system. And if you did that, boom, your receive address, 50 Bitcoin, 50 free land runs, land, line up, stand on this line, boom, run. Boom, stake your claim. People were able to stake 50 Bitcoin stakes for free. That error is not here today, but you can still stake your claim. You have to give up some value. You've got to give up bullshit paper today. And you have to get it from another stupid Bitcoiner. Do you realize that you cannot get Bitcoin today unless it comes from an existing Bitcoiner? And any Bitcoiner who is allowing their Bitcoin to be bought by you, they're a freaking idiot. They have no idea what they possess. They're looking at this like it's something, like it's another item to buy for a dollar and sell for two. They are disrespecting the rarest thing human beings have ever come in contact with. And on my watch, I'm just not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you do that. Today, Satoshis are given away free. Fountain app where you can listen to my past podcast. Free Satoshis just for listening to a podcast. Now, most of you won't bother with that because the value of a Satoshi is so infinitesimally small to you, it's not worth the effort. But do you know how many people thought that when Gavin Andreessen was giving away 50 Bitcoin? It's like, well, I'm going to do that. The value of, of 50 Bitcoin was so infinitesimally small. Why bother? Mistake. Mistake, people. You are disrespecting Satoshis the same way that your brother, your human brothers and sisters disrespected 50 Bitcoin in the past. And, and one full Bitcoin in the past. I saw a contest where fifth place in a contest was 100 Bitcoin. Fifth place. And first prize was $250. $250 first prize. Fifth prize, 100 Bitcoin. They disrespected what this thing was. 
and they will never forget until the day they die. You're going to sell. I know you are. I know I'm speaking to you. You're going to sell the rarest thing human beings have ever had. And guess what? You're going to die with regret. I promise you, people, this is something you never forget. You will die with this on your mind. You will die with Bitcoin on your mind. You will tell stories for the rest of your life of how you had it at a certain price. I promise you this. And guess what? Your family and the very people you love will never let you live it down. You will go down in your family's history as being one of the dumbest people. I'm talking about in the future as being one of the dumbest people in their entire family bloodline. Because people born in the future will read about how their uncle or their great grandfather or their great great their grandfather had the ability to buy this. And they're gonna be like, but I don't understand. Dad, you mean granddad lived at a time where people actually sold this for pieces of paper? And he didn't buy any for us? Well, yeah, he did, but he sold it. He sold the most valuable thing on earth? That's our family? I am telling you, we do this today with Bitcoin. You sold 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas with just pepperoni on them? You didn't even get any pineapple or jalapenos or anything? The fuck? We do it today. You don't think it's going to continue? You know how many people say, man, I had 1,600 Bitcoin. And I sold out of it and I bought a car. You know what 1,600 Bitcoin is worth today? Do you think those people won't be telling that story until the day they die? You think they won't die with that on their minds? I am telling you people, selling this thing to go back to the weak is the worst move you can make from an historical point of view. And I have made it my business to pound the table so hard as to try my best to not allow you to make that mistake. Find another freaking way if you need something else. Find another way. Take a freaking 10 cup and go on the corner somewhere in New York City and Times Square and beg for change if you have to. Do not let this go. You will be sorry and you will die dejected, depressed, and deprived of the greatest thing that human beings have ever come in contact with. <laughs> this produces chills. I appreciate that. I just hope it's connected. Um, Calvin says, my sister still ignores me, telling me, Calvin, I have no, I, I have no clue what you're talking about. And unfortunately, this will be the case, people. Unfortunately, this will be the case for the vast majority of human beings. And, you know, your heart hurts in a way. But it is the story. That has been the story of human beings for time immemorial. Most people, I come from the financial arena, so... I'm somewhat blessed and fortunate enough to have done, have just played financial markets my entire adult life. I don't know anything else except that. And in my world, it's just thoroughly understood that the opportunity in something doesn't exist after it's obvious. After all of the I's are dotted, and all of the T's across. Oh, now it's a great opportunity. No, opportunity's gone. 
that the greatest opportunity is not when the whole world understands. It's not when the, the sisters of Calvin's get it. The greatest opportunity is not when, oh, now America is the greatest country on earth. Now I want to go. There's no free land runs there then. There's no cheap property then now. Do you understand? I'm not saying there aren't any benefits. I'm just saying that the, the land runs where you can take some type of wooden stake and stake a little claim in the ground, in the country, in the protocol, that's not going to be for the vast majority of human beings. The majority of human beings, guys, are going to live off of the Bitcoin dust. Do you understand? You ever remember the movies with the gold dust? The old Westerns where you get someone rolling up to the uh, saloon and they go into their vest pocket and pull out a leather pouch. Do I have a leather pouch nearby? <laughs> pull out a leather pouch. And in this pouch, they had little tiny gold kernels and dust, gold dust. The majority of the world will deal with the Satoshis of Bitcoin, the dust of Bitcoin. When you today can get chunky Bitcoin, you can get Bitcoins. And some of you can't at that level today. I get it. But you can get quarters and halves and eighths and okay teenies we used to call them teenies back in on wall street in, in the 1980s teenies is one sixteenth you can get teenies of a bitcoin today you can get eighths of a bitcoin today you can get quarters of a bitcoin today some of you can get bitcoins today still but your kids that are born today will never be able to get a 16th of a Bitcoin, ever. Their children will barely be able to get their hands on decent amounts of Satoshis. We are the special ones. And I find that the vast majority of people like the sisters of Calvin do not understand how unique a point in hit of a point in history that this is it will be written about for hundreds if not thousands of years hell gold is 6000 years old as a base layer of money for the entire world silver is older 9000 years old bitcoin is going to take both of them out both of them out because it's better in every single way every characteristic every property is exponentially better than every other money that human beings have ever experimented with which means that it will be exponentially better than all of those experiences that humans had with them and it will last longer exponentially than all of those lasted gold came the closest and therefore lasted six thousand years well bitcoin is better how many more thousands of years is that going to last? The better always lasts longer, always. Are you picking up when I'm laying down? <laughs> or am I freaking in? Am I freaking insane to you? Am I talking like a freaking idiot to you? <laughs> Some people feel that way. Oliver. Oliver, I think you've lost you. Uh, you're, you're off your rocker, Oliver. How can you say these things, Oliver? How do you know, Oliver? That's what I hear. <laughs> Stein Sachs realized this. I just got pulled over for being on my phone. I showed the officer you're live and he let me go. Damn. <laughs> That is awesome. Guys, that is freaking awesome. I'm going to be telling that story for, for a while. Thanks for sharing that. St stacking sats for life. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. All right, cool. That is awesome. 
All right. Paula says, absolutely not. You are spot on. I hope so. But guys, I do want to finish this list here. And um, what's another way? That's just, what's another guaranteed way you are going to lose your Bitcoin? Trading it. Oh, I'm going to trade Bitcoin for more Bitcoin, Oliver. Yeah, sure you are. Yes, sure you are. You're freaking kidding me. I have done the math on this for you. I have done the work. I have done the back testing. Guys, I've been trading financial markets for 43 freaking years, 37 of those as a professional on Wall Street. I have traded tens of billions of dollars over my career, and I've done it exceptionally well. And I'm telling you, and I still continue to trade financial markets every single day of my life. And I'm pretty sure that the day I finally kick the freaking bucket, I will have placed a trade somewhere. And I'm telling you, you cannot trade Bitcoin. Me. I can probably out trade. There's how many? There's 1,819 people here. Every single one of you. I guarantee you I can trade better than you. And I'm telling you that you can't do it. I can't do it. I've done the work on it. I have looked at this thing every which way but loose. I've run every single back test I possibly can on, on this item. I've done the math. It's not possible. You can get lucky and think that's you. That's not you. That's freaking luck. Can't do it. Why can't you do it? Number one, it's an 80 vol asset. An 80 vol asset cannot produce consistent success. You can't have consistent success with an 80 vol asset. Do you know how many assets in the world are 80 vol assets? Not very many. This is an 80 vol asset. It's impossible. Number one. Number two, mathematically, it's impossible to gain consistency with an 80 vol asset. Number one. Number two, 80 to 85% of all of Bitcoin's annual gains come over a random 13 to 18 days out of a year. I want you to think about this. Listen to, let's read the words that are listening to the word that are coming out of my mouth. 80 to 85% of all of Bitcoin's annualized gains. Now we're talking about the best performing asset on planet earth, not just now, it has the best record of anything human beings have ever known. And not just by a little bit. It is so far number one that number two thinks it's number one because it can't see it. The best performing asset in the history of mankind produces its annualized gains over a random 13 to 18 days a year. How, how do you freaking trade that? It eats you alive 98.5% of the year. It spends an inordinate amount of time of its life doing nothing. You can trade that? No, you can't. I am telling you, I have shaken this thing upside down, rolled it on its side, looked at it with magnifying glasses from every possible angle. I know how to do this. The math never adds up. You're not going to do it. The only way, there is only one way to trade Bitcoin successfully. Only one. I've only seen this work this way consistently. You can get lucky, but to be consistently accurate, to be consistently a, a winner trading Bitcoin can only happen one way. And that is to fall asleep at night and freaking dream that you are a successful trader with Bitcoin. But you will have to wake up to your freaking miserable life as a losing trader of Bitcoin in the real world because it can't be done. The only way is in your dreams. And that is coming from a decorated four-decade professional 
trigger. You want to lose your Bitcoin? Trade it. And I swear to, I swear to everything in life, you will wind up with less or lose it all. Do that long enough and you'll see. You'll miss out on the greatest opportunity that human beings have ever had. It's not worth it. Bitcoin is freedom. You don't trade freaking freedom, bozos. Talking to, I'm not talking to all of you. I'm talking to the ones that still don't understand that you don't trade. They're still scratching their head. But Oliver, I, I like to trade. But Oliver, I like to trade. What are you talking about? No. I don't care what else you trade. You can trade your mother-in-law's back and forth for all I care. That's better than trading Bitcoin. All right? You don't trade freedom. You don't trade the escape. You don't say, well, Oliver, okay, I have freedom now. When is it time to trade out of freedom and go back to financial slavery? To go back to the melting ice cube? To go back to the failing system? I've left prison. When is it time to go back to prison, Oliver? When is it time to exit? When is freedom overbought, Oliver? And these people, these bozos out here drawing their squiggly lines and circles on freedom. You don't, freedom doesn't have trend lines. Freedom doesn't have little circles and Fibonacci. Let me do my Fibonacci on freedom. Da, 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 da. This is silly. Everyone who applied a Fibonacci or some stupid technical indicator on Bitcoin in 2011, you think you think they feel smart today? You think anyone who called Bitcoin overbought in 2012 doesn't feel like a freaking asshole today at 70,000 or at 70,000, 69,000 and change or whatever, wherever we are? You know what I'm saying. This is stupid. It's ridiculous. You want to lose your Bitcoin to somebody like me? Because when I take your Bitcoin, it will never see the light of day again. Never, ever. My mother used to say, Oliver, Oliver, son, never say never. Sorry, mom. I'm saying never. If I take your Bitcoin, and I will, you will never, the world will never see that again. I make Bitcoin scarcer every single day of my life. Do you understand? People say, Oliver, Bitcoin doesn't become scarcer every day because it's always 21 million. No. There is an element of scarcity that is connected to the concept of availability. Well, I'm telling you, if I get your Bitcoin, it is no longer available to any, not a single other human being will ever touch that Bitcoin again, ever. And so, yes, I make Bitcoin more scarce. <laughs> Fibonacci on freedom. It's crazy, you don't know. Am I right or am I wrong? It's stupid. All right. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Strata swag. B BTC ETFs in seven weeks reached inflows that took gold's ETF out in three years or so. Imagine the pace. And the inflows haven't even started. The inflows haven't even started. Guys, give me just a moment here. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to put up a chart. My, my camera is about to go out here. So I want to change. I'm going to put this chart of Bitcoin up here. Just in the interim while I change my battery here, if you don't mind. Okay. Give me a second here. I just want to, and I do want to finish up these. Uh, I want to finish up these things. Give me just a moment. Okay. Crazy. All right. I think we are. 
back. Boom. I used to, uh, I want you to take a look. Let's just take a look at it one more time. It's just so beautiful, right? It's so beautiful. Look how beautiful that is. And this, imagine, imagine all the people, right? Imagine all the people were saying, but Oliver, but Oliver, I'm, 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 I'm scared. I'm scared. Imagine if you were there. Look at that. But Oliver, I'm scared. <laughs> Unreal. It's a beautiful thing, though, isn't it? Isn't that a beautiful thing? That is a freaking beautiful thing. Um, I used to have a... Uh, can I do this? I used to have... <laughs> <laughs> just look at that picture, guys. It's beautiful. I used to have a friend, um, childhood friend, and he was a he was a stutterer. Um, had a really bad stutter, and uh, whenever he would see something exciting, like a fancy car or whatever, he would go. That's what I'm telling you to do, just like my childhood friend. That's a beautiful thing right there. And, and sometimes his stutter would get stuck, so we would have to hit him in the back and stop him from stuttering. La, 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 boom, like that, and we would stop stuttering. <laughs> it's a true story, by the way. Um, la, 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 la. That is a beautiful thing right there. All right. <laughs> uh, I know I'm crazy, guys. I know. I know you don't have to tell me. All right, so uh, what else? What else are we talking about here? <laughs> I got a few. I got a few. A few more things to share with you. How are you going to use your Bitcoin? All right, okay, guys. And so this trading thing is not done. Now, the idea. Some people, when I tell them, look, dude, you, you're not going to trade Bitcoin. You're just not going to do it. You're going to lose all your Bitcoin. Just forget it. Just drop that notion now. So, but Oliver, what about like just as we discussed before, what about just selling out of some and then waiting for it to come down, have its bear market and get back in? Yeah. First of all, you ain't that good, buddy. I'm sorry. I know that we're the star of our little story and our freaking little minds. And we, we have all this talent in our minds. But first of all, even if you got lucky enough to sell near the top, and that would be luck. Even if you lucked into selling the top, you're going to fuck up the money with something else. I know you. I know you. You're going to put it on some bullshit. You're going to go on vacation somewhere. You're going to use the money, spend the money, lose the money. And guess what? You know what life tends to do once you have money? All of a sudden, life says, oh, He's got some money, and all of a sudden, every relative comes out of the out of the out of the net out of the woodwork. People you haven't heard forever, and things just all of a sudden just start happening. Why are why do things happen once you have money? Why is it? Why didn't this happen when I was broke? But now it's happening. It's life is that way. It starts gnawing at you because you have, and I am telling you, you are not going to keep all of that in safekeeping, by the way, for 18 freaking months. And even if you did manage to do that, you probably wouldn't put it in anyway because you wouldn't know where the low is. All the news is negative. Bitcoin's dead again. There's nothing positive being said and you'll be trigger shy. Guys, it's not worth it. The wealth is made on the downside. You should be stepping up when it's dropping. Bitcoin has never failed a stepper upper when it's dropping. Never. Not one human being is negative today. Not one human being is negative who stepped up and bought the dip. In 15 years, there's not one human being on earth who has stepped up to the plate, bought the Bitcoin dip, and is not better off today. Not one human being. Think about that. That's very powerful. 
it always comes back for you. And will forevermore. It's mathematically baked into the protocol. For the first time, people, we do have certainty. And this is what garners the distrust that so many people have in Bitcoin. They say it just can't be that certain. It can't be that sure, but it is. The problem is that everything that we were forced, compelled to, or the only things we had a choice of in the past were things that were created by human beings and the imperfections of human beings, the frailty of human beings is always wrought into the things that human beings create. And so because human beings can't really over time be trusted, nothing that comes from a human being, no asset that comes from a human being can be trusted. It will fail because human beings just fail. This is the first time we have something that is not in the hands of any human being, that cannot be altered by any human beings, cannot be paused, cannot be stopped, cannot be manipulated, cannot be stolen, cannot be confiscated. It is the first asset completely outside of the hands of human beings, not run by human beings, not controlled by human beings, and the only asset that actually employs human beings to work for it and protect it. Can you imagine how amazing that is? That there is only one thing on planet Earth that actually hires, employs human beings. You see, before Bitcoin, human beings only hired human beings. Human beings work for other human beings. Not anymore. Human beings work for something that is not human. Human beings work for something. They, they, they work for it and they compete to work for it. And this is the first thing in the human experience that actually pays human beings to take care of it, defend it, protect it. That's freaking crazy. It has a pay schedule. What? It has a pay schedule, people. It says, okay, look, this is my pay schedule. I pay every 10 minutes and I pay this amount every 10 minutes. And here's my pay schedule all the way to the year 2140. What? And any human being can be employed by me. What? The, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. The deeper you understand how special this thing is. For the first time, we have certainty because human beings can't touch it. The moment human beings can touch it, they fuck it up, everything. Because they can't touch it, because it's in a realm that can't be tampered with by the human experience, it can be certain. Because Bitcoin at its core, at its essence, is mathematics, and it is mathematics for everyone in an equal format. One plus one equals two for you and me. It doesn't matter how whether you're richer than I am, whether you're black, white, tall, short, fat, skinny, in shape, out of shape, wherever you live, whatever your age is, one plus one equals two. That's the certainty that Bitcoin delivers to us. Because we have never experienced certainty at that level, we distrust it. But increasingly so, more and more people more and more Oliver Velezes are being born every single hour and they're coming for your land. They're coming to take to, to stake a claim in your row while you sit there and wonder and wait. I'm not quite sure yet, Oliver. I know it's 15 years, but I need another 15 years. Dude, you're going to live on average 84 years. How many years do you need? A hundred? I told you this many times in my field, the gold standard, quote unquote gold, huh, the gold standard, right, is 10 years. You know why it's 10 years? Because you can't fit in my industry. We know you can't fake 10 years. You can fake one year. You can have a good record, even three years. You can get lucky, 
right place, right time. You threw a dart and picked the right asset. But 10 years, it's impossible to fake that. There's too much time and too many things that cannot be anticipated that goes on over a 10-year period. And if you have done well over a 10-year period, throughout that 10-year period consistently, then you are the real deal. Well, Bitcoin has given you freaking 15 years, not 10, not eight, not nine, not five, 15. And it has broken every single record human beings have ever come up with. Well, what about this one? Broke it. What about this one? Broke it. It's the best performing asset in an hour in the history of the world. Best performing asset in a day. Best performing asset in a week, a month, a quarter, a year, two years, five, three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years. What, the, what, what else do you want? It's the most secure network the world has ever seen. The best performing asset in the history of the world. All right. It hasn't been down once, hasn't failed, never broke its promise. It's not like your politicians, never said one thing and did another, kept its word, lays everything out for bear, audits itself every single 10 minutes for life, forever, shows you the books in every single transaction that has ever taken place. It's the most transparent. It's the most secure thing on planet Earth. It's the most certain thing on planet Earth. It's the best performing asset on planet Earth. It hasn't been down for a single second. It runs 365 days a year, 24 hours a, hours a day. It cannot be touched, cannot be broken, cannot be stopped, cannot be stolen, cannot be confiscated. What the fuck do you need more of? It's come back 480 times from death. So with all of that, Oliver, I think I need another 10 years. <laughs> if some old dude that this, I'm old too, guys. So if some old dude, right, my age, 58 years old, right? I'm 58, so yeah, 58 year old guy, right? In a suit, white hair, you know, long history, money manager, had freaking Bitcoin returns as their history. The entire world would give that guy money. The entire world. Every government on earth would give that guy money. Do you understand? If a if a if a white dude with white hair and a suit with a with a financial history from with a degree from Harvard Business School or Wharton had the freaking 15 year record that Bitcoin has, the entire world would flock to him. They did to Warren Buffett, didn't they? And Warren Buffett can't even light a freaking match to Bitcoin. So my question is, what else do you need to see? Because if you still doubt Bitcoin, that's okay. As long as you have a framework for when you will stop doubting it. You see, ignorant doubt is when you say, I'm not sure, Oliver, and that's it. That's ignorance. That is low IQ doubt. There is intelligent doubt. I'm just quite not sure. I'm not quite educated enough. I haven't gone deep enough down the rabbit hole to really, truly wrap my hands around the value proposition of this digital asset. That's what they'll call it, right? <sighs> this digital asset. But I will tell you this. If Bitcoin does this, this, and that, I'm a believer. That's intelligent doubt. There is a framework for when you will stop doubting. Most people just doubt and they have no idea why they doubt and there's no framework for when they will stop doubting. So if you are a doubter, come up with some line items that says, well, you know what? I need these three things. I need to see these three things before I become a believer. That's intelligence. That's intelligence. You have defined the breaking point where your disbelief stops. But to simply say, I don't believe it. Oliver, I'm sorry, I don't believe it is dumb. All right. Um, <clears throat> last thing. Last thing I will say about selling is that, guys, I want you to understand that if you live in a jurisdiction where you are taxed on capital gains, 
you are already, if you're trying to sidestep Bitcoin's declines, which I told you is a mistake because the billions are made in the decline. Generational wealth is made in the decline. It's not made on the way up. That's a fallacy by unsophisticated financial people. They don't understand that it's the down. The work that you do when it's going down is what determines the wealth you make on the way up. You don't start on the way up. That's stupid. In my world, that's stupid. But here's what I also want you to understand or to think about if you are in a tax, a jurisdiction that will tax capital gains. When you sell Bitcoin for a profit, you're already bringing a good portion of the bear market you're trying to step away from. You're bringing it onto yourself instantly. So if you've got a 40% tax, 35, 40% tax on it, and Bitcoin's bear markets have historically been, well, now they're around 75%. If you just instantly brought onto yourself 35 to 40% of the 75%, does that even make sense? You're already halfway there, dude. You're halfway there. You might as well hold it and use the, the, the latter half to build up your wealth for the next cycle, no? Your taxes are part of the bear market that you bring onto yourself. So it's stupid from a tax perspective as well. In addition to that, I will tell you that now that we have an, a constant, permanent, institutional bid created by ETFs coming into existence by galore, nine ETFs will never not have a bid, which is a buy, in the market for Bitcoin 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're going to have an institutional bid in the market forever. Bitcoin became the best performing asset on planet Earth without institutional bids in the market. Now you're telling me that we have institutional bids and you think that Bitcoin's going to have the same 75% declines? You don't know markets and how they operate then, buddy. There's no more 75% declines. We'll be lucky if we get a 50% decline. Now, there's 22 new ETFs coming online, being approved next month. Next month, 22 brand new spot Bitcoin ETFs being approved in Hong Kong. UK just announced brand new approval of brand new ETNs, spot Bitcoin ETNs for accredited investors. Do you think it's going to stop there? The world. Every country that matters is going to have spot Bitcoin ETFs with institutional bids in the market trying to get your Bitcoin, stake a claim in your lane. And you think now that there's going to be 75% declines? not going to happen, people. So now let's say average decline is 40, 50 percent. Now you're trying to escape the 40 to 50 percent, but your taxes are 35 percent. Dude, just hold it and keep using it as a savings technology. Let the 35 to 40 to 45 to 50 percent declines in Bitcoin's future make you exponentially wealthier, wealthier four years later. That's how you play this, guys. You use those drops to guarantee a heightened level of wealth, independence and freedom four years from now. Four years is coming. Whether you want it to or not, it's coming. Why not let it come and be wealthier? It doesn't matter what you do. It's coming with Bitcoin or without Bitcoin. Four years from today will arrive whether you have Bitcoin or not. Why not let it arrive with Bitcoin? You're guaranteed mathematically to be better than you are, wealthier, richer, freer, more independent. Why not just let it come with Bitcoin? Bozo. <laughs> All right, guys, last thing here. Oh, here's a, There are two other things, and I can't really, I'm not going to go into them. I've been talking long enough, but I will tell you there's two other things. 
Following crypto bros. Are you kidding me? Following some dude with a lizard, with a lizard or frog avatar. Following the advice of some person you don't know that won't even show their face, that would rather show the world a lizard. <laughs> this is the insanity we're dealing with. Oh, well, uh, but the, but crypto lizard said uh, it's uh, uh, freedom's overbought. I saw it broke his trend line. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> this is the stuff I get in my DMs. What are your thoughts on uh, frog face uh, crypto expert? He says that uh, the the pie indicator has never failed. That, 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 that. He said, dude, you're listening to a frog? Are you serious? Come to me with that bullshit. <laughs> dude, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're just going to lose all your Bitcoin. Uh, <clears throat> All right. The last thing is you don't self-custody your Bitcoin properly. It's a guaranteed way. You're sloppy with your self-custody. Guys, no one said that freedom was easy. And in some cases, it's not all that simple either. So what? Grow up. Take on some freaking responsibility. But Oliver, I'm scared to hold my keys. You sound like a freaking four-year-old. You hold the keys to your home, don't you? You hold the keys to your freaking car, don't you? But Oliver, it's a, it's a little complex. You will sit down, buy a freaking piece of Kia for ikea furniture and sit on the living room floor for four freaking hours putting together a piece of cheap ikea furniture and you can't figure out how to secure 12 words give me a break dude grow up freedom requires a little bit of work independence and generational wealth requires a little bit of personal responsibility be a man be a woman and stop freaking complaining about securing 12 to 24 words. You can do it. <laughs> it's crazy. I've seen you. Some of you have put, some of you fathers at Christmas, man, putting together your, your son's Hot Wheels set, sit, sitting on the floor next to a freaking Christmas tree for three hours putting together Hot Wheels, but you can't secure 12 words. And don't let me get started on the Barbie doll houses and the 1,999 pieces to put that shit together. <laughs> Come on. Oh, uh, it's not that hard. Guaranteed to lose it. Let someone else hold your freedom. Oliver, I'm scared to I'm scared to hold my own freedom. So I'm gonna give it to another man to hold for me. Do you understand that this is a trick that has been played on the masses for time immemorial? You're not really good to hold your own shit. Give your give it to me. I'll keep I'll keep I'll keep it safe for you. I'll keep it safe. Just, just go. I got it. Now, you can't hold it. This is a slave-master relationship where the, where the, or a sharecropper relationship where the, the landowner says to his sharecropper, I've got your pay. I know you own earned it. You worked the land, but I am giving you a house, right, on my land. I'm letting you live here free. I know I'm going to pay you, 
but I'll hold it for you because I think you're just going to waste it. So let me hold it for you. Do you know how many times in history people have lost their shit letting another man hold their freedom, hold their worth, hold their value for them? Bitcoin has come to free us from that bullshit. It's time to reclaim our worth, our value, and not let another man's dirty mitts on it. Bitcoin has given us the ability to opt out of that where I got to come and, 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 and hand over my jewels to some other dude. Hold your own shit and do it properly. And let me tell you something. If you're having trouble with this, this is where you go. Let me show you where you go. You go to my friend. All right. Let me show you. Oh, give me a second. You go to my friend. And you just spend some time here. This is where I want you to spend some time. I'm going to show you this. You want to self-custody proper, properly? This is where you go. All right? Don't DM me. You just go here. All right? There it is. Right there. BTC Sessions. Go to that YouTube channel. Click subscribe. Make sure you click the bell in the upper right-hand corner. Turn all notifications on. And anything self-custody, anything hard wallet, anything 1224 words, anything doing it the right responsible way, you're going to learn here. That's how I learned it from this guy. Okay? And you're good. Back above 70. All right. I appreciate you, OV. Your word is bond. Yes, thanks. I think I'm going to end on that, too. For the first time, people. For the first time. Your Bitcoin is really your 12 to 24 words. That's it. All you got to do is secure 12 to 24 words. And you have a stake you have staked your claim with 12 to 24 words. A lot of people say, well, Oliver, I don't know. What, it's not physical what it is. It's literally your word today. There used to be a saying in the past, my word is my bond. And what that meant was that my word was a value. When I give you my word, it's as good as heaven and earth itself. It's as good as gold, was the saying. My word is my bond. You can count on it. Well, for the first time in the human experience, your words really are your bond. Your word is your value. Your word is your wealth. Your word is your riches. Your word is everything that you are. Your word is your future. Your words is your Bitcoin. Keep your word. And I promise it'll be as certain as night follows the day that this word or these words of yours will take care of your family and your future forever. Every four years, It'll make you better, higher, wealthier, richer, with a mathematical certainty we have never been exposed to. Keep your word. And your children's, children's, children's children will remember your name. All right, guys. Thank you for coming. Wow, 2,302 people. That is very special. Thank you for giving me your time this evening, afternoon, wee hours of the morning, wherever you are in the world. Okay, guys? Remember, all of these things wind up on Bitcoin Unleashed. If you found anything here of value, go there. All right? It's a pinned at the top of my profile. Um, pick the poison of your choice and maybe take in some past uh, episodes. I ask you for absolutely nothing 
I don't want your money. I don't need your money. I just want you to look. All right. Just look, guys. Ciao for now. Boom. And another one.